Many secrets of unique cultures are likely to sink into oblivion, since there is practically nothing left of the ancient settlements. Researchers do not stop bit by bit collecting the mosaic of the life of disappeared civilizations, but time is merciless, and it is becoming increasingly difficult to find answers to questions. In this video, I will show you the exact place where the mysterious Atlantis was located. You will see an ancient artifact weighing 9 tons and an ancient glass bowl, which is about 2,000 years Result. Watch the video till the end, you will definitely like it. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Sword of the High Middle Ages at present, there are only a few swords in good condition in Belarus, which date back to the 11th-13th centuries. This sword dates back to the 11th-13th centuries and belongs to the post-Viking era. There are traces of silver plating on the handle. It is in good condition for an archaeological artifact. In general, the sword has been preserved almost completely, and only the blade has been partially lost. This allows it to be dated and attributed to a specific type. At the same time, archaeologists specify that now the sword, with the safety of about 80%, weighs approximately 1.2 kilograms and has lengths of 70 centimeters. Unfortunately, it is impossible to establish exactly where the sword was made. Giant Artifact of an Ancient Civilization Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery in Israel. It is very similar to a natural cave, which was destroyed and partially filled with a 1.5 meter layer of clay at the end of the 4th century. In 1956, a bulldozer was used to clear the rubble. During their work, scientists discovered a huge artifact, a large ancient rectangular slab made of an unknown material. Its dimensions were impressive – 198 cm wide, 335 cm long, 46 cm thick and weighing more than 9 tons. The plate has a perfectly flat surface. At first glance, the origin of the slab seemed a mystery to archaeologists, but at that time it was not very relevant. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition from the Cornyn Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri decided to explore the region in search of possible remains of ancient glassworks. Someone suggested that the plate was just a blank for something and could be made of glass. The suggestion was initially taken as a joke. Surprisingly, chemical analysis carried out later confirmed that this huge and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. Further, scientists suggested that the rolling plate is a huge piece of glass of the first stage, designed to create other objects from it. But the question remained open – for what reason was the slab left there? Today, several facts remain unexplained. Scientists studying the evolution of glass argued that the production of such a plate in ancient times in the filled conditions was simply impossible. This required more than 12 tons of raw materials, at least 20 tons of heating oil. It was also necessary to maintain the combustion temperature at 1100 degrees Celsius continuously for five days. Finally, the production of a 9-ton glass slab of perfectly even shape clearly indicates the existence of an advanced civilization that built a processing plant using high technology. It should be understood that in the entire history only two pieces of glass, larger ones, were created. Both are huge telescopic mirrors in machines developed in the last century. It seems that the slab from Beit Sherim is a rare artifact demonstrating the existence of a highly developed civilization in the past. All facts point to the fact that a powerful ancient culture unfortunately was lost on Earth. Traces of an ancient civilization when examining underwater grottoes off the coast of Yucatan, archaeologists discovered traces of an ancient civilization that is more than 10,000 years old. Employees of the Mexican Scientific Institute of History and Anthropology for the first time managed to penetrate sunken caves that are located in the coastal waters of the Caribbean Peninsula. Underwater archaeologists managed to find traces of an ancient civilization in the grottoes that once lived on this peninsula many thousands of years ago. Scientists have discovered discovered the remains of bonfires belonging to the distant ancestors of the Aztecs and Mayans. For Mexico, this is the first evidence of human interaction with wildlife. In total, archaeologists have managed to discover and document about 14 prehistoric fires. It took almost two years to collect samples from the bottom of the cave for study, and it took almost a year to study them. 
After the analysis carried out, the scientists managed to find out that the very first, earliest of all fires was lit around 10,750 BC and the last around 10,250 BC. Scientists claim that this is the most ancient coal that was discovered in Mexico, and besides, it was also created by men. The remains of the fires belong to the period of the last ice age, and this is another confirmation of the theory generally accepted in the scientific world about the settlement of America by people. In addition to fires, underwater archaeologists discovered small stones with traces of processing. Perhaps these were the tools of ancient people, but in order to be completely convinced of this, scientists took them for study. Most of the fires were found in Acton Ka Cave. This is the first cave in which traces of a person were found as a dwelling. Cache of gold coins A small ceramic jar containing seven gold coins from the early Islamic period was discovered by archaeologists in a cache in the Israeli city of Yavne. During excavations, archaeologists discovered an amazing find. They came across a fragment of a small jar containing gold coins from the early Islamic period. The researchers suggest that the cache probably belonged to a ceramic artist working in the area. A coin expert from the Israel Antiquities Authority notes that the cache dates from the beginning of the Abbasid period in the 9th century AD. Among the coins, there is a gold dinner, 786-809 AD. Such a coin is quite rare for these places. Mysterious underground holes of the Second Temple Era Near the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, archaeologists have discovered mysterious rooms carved into the rocky ground during the time of Jesus Christ. On May 19, the Antiquities Authority released images of the unique, huge rooms discovered during excavation and the entrance to the Western Wall Tunnel. Large holes carved into the rock in the decades leading up to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD were under a later sumptuous Byzantine-era hole. Archaeologists say that these rooms were below street level in the middle of the 1st century AD as well. However, experts find it difficult to answer the question why the inhabitants of Jerusalem before the Great Revolt of the 60s needed to spend so much effort on creating underground holes near the temple. It is believed that there are two answers to it. Either these are storage rooms under a large disappeared building, or the holes were intended for escape in a moment of danger. One of the photographs of the Antiquities Authority shows recess in the stone doorway for locking the doors, and near them a semicircular deep niche, believed to be for the installation of oil lamps for lighting. Numerous ceramic and stone artifacts were found in the premises. In the 6th century, during the early Byzantine era, a large building with a floor covered with mosaics was built on this site. Later, in the 8th century, when the Abbasids ruled the Eretz Israel, the whole was divided into small parts. Atlantis, really? Atlantis, according to Plato's description, was a huge island with mountainous terrain. The mountains surrounded the perimeter in a ring smoothly turning into gentle foothills and those in turn into a wide plain. The island had a fertile climate, but the soil was stony and infertile. The god Poseidon, to whom Zeus allocated this island in response to a corresponding request, first started breeding sheep here. Then he married an ordinary local woman, who bore him ten children. The eldest was named Atlant, and it was he who became the head of state, and the inhabitants began to be called Atlantis. The island turned into a huge city with a large number of inhabitants, and the Atlanteans built a defense around the city. They surrounded the plain with two water and three earthen rings, built bridges and dug canals, thus connecting the center of the city directly to the sea. There were about 50 stadia to the sea, about 9 kilometers, and the central island, which housed the temple of Poseidon and his wife Cleto, had a size of about 5 stadia, that is, a little less than a kilometer. Simply put, the whole of Atlantis in Plato's description looks like a city in the form of rings of water and earth with a total diameter of about 127 stadia, that is, about 23 kilometers. Not so long ago, literally at the end of 2018, a theory was put forward that the Eye of the Sahara, an unusual geological formation in Mauritania, is the same Atlantis that mankind cannot find for many centuries. Interestingly, the diameter of the Eye of the Sahara is exactly these 23 kilometers. Mummy Paint 
The names of paints are often called very beautifully, but they can hide terrible secrets. So, for example, Mummy Brown is not just a funny name referring to ancient Egyptian culture. This paint has long kept a terrible secret of its production. It was made from mummies. For a long time, the pre-Raphaelite artist's favorite paint was the brown Mummy Brown. It was very difficult to mix a delicate noble amber shade, so the paint was really popular. It was sold until the 60s of the last century, and it was produced as follows. Particles of real mummies were mixed with right resin and mirror tree. Many artists have used this paint. Traces of mummies can be found on the canvases of the lector and burns. The use of mummies in paint can be startling, but this is far from the only aspect of the use of Egyptian remains. Ironically, in Europe, mummies were also used in medicine in the development of medicines. Embalming the bodies of the deceased, the Egyptians used not only bandages but also other materials – beeswax, resin, spices, bitumen. So bitumen was not only an important ingredient for the preservation of the body, but, as was previously thought, in small doses, a useful substance for the living. Many medieval doctors believed that another worldly force lived in the remains of mummies, which was able to heal the living. So the famous Paracelsus believed. For a long time, the mummies were consigned to oblivion, but after the Napoleonic campaign, interest in Egypt increased again, and mummies are back in fashion. They were brought as an outlandish souvenir to many European homes, and then they found more useful applications. They were used as fuel and even fertilizers. People refused to use mummy brown when they realized that this consumerist attitude was undermining the study of Egyptian culture. Crusader Sword at Sea while diving, Shlomi Katzing, a resident of the Israeli city of Atle, discovered a 900-year-old sword. There were other ancient artifacts nearby. Layers of sand at the bottom suddenly revealed a real treasury. Archaeologists have long observed this area, a natural cove that has sheltered sheep for thousands of years. Earlier discoveries showed that the area was inhabited as early as 4,000 years ago. Representatives of the Israel Antiquities Authority note that recently the number of people engaged in diving in the area is growing. Experts attribute this to their desire to find antiques. Unpredictable ocean conditions often bring artifacts to the surface. Even the smallest storm can move sand, exposing some areas of the seabed and filling others. Katzing, in addition to the sword, noticed fragments of pottery, as well as stone and metal anchors. A sword about a meter long is made of iron. It is still densely covered with shells and other growths, so scientists are not ready to tell about its owner. Specialists have begun work to clean up the artifact. In any case, his story will be interesting. Starting in the 11th century, the Roman Catholic Church Church sent crusader armies to the Middle East. Their task was to return the sacred places for Christians. The crusaders and their opponents, the Muslim Ayyubids and Mamluks, used straight swords of the same size and shape. However, since this sword was discovered less than 200 meters offshore, researchers are almost certain that it is a crusader weapon. In those days, Muslims built fortifications along the coast as a defense against Christians arriving by boat. They themselves did not travel by sea. About what the thousand year bowl shines. Thanks to its technology, the Syrian bowl of the 10th century seems to radiate a certain glow. Through the glass, slightly tarnished by time, one can see the golden threads of the inscription. This text can be read a thousand years later, but scientists still cannot understand how such a vessel was made. The glass from which the small hemispherical bowl is made is colorless and appears clear and free of bubbles under the windward surface. The bowl is decorated with gold foil placed between two layers of glass. Fenimid craftsmen who created a special technology for decorating glass objects made it in the 10th century in Syria. In this region, the tradition of glassmaking originated in ancient times. Until now, the method of producing Muslim double-layer glass is unclear. On none of the surviving objects or fragments, there is a trace of a pond, a pipe used to blow glass or crystal products. The layers of glass on the walls of the vessels are no refused to each other. The bowl is interesting, even due to its age and material. It's glass, fragile and rarely reaching our days in a more or less normal state of material. This thing, of course, prestigious and unique, belonged to the palace items. Today it is one of the four known Syrian double-layered glass vessels in the world. The other three are in the largest museums in the world, a bottle in the British Museum, a glass in the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha, and another bowl in the Corny Museum of Glass USA. All these items were most likely made in the same workshop. The bowl from the collection of the Marjani Foundation is the only one from this group that has a readable inscription made in a high-blooming coffee handwriting. It says Al-Malk Lilahi, 
The power belongs to the Almighty. And at the end of the video, I wanted to ask you to rate this video with a thumbs up or down, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!